Um, well, I think we, we, we were obviously interested in, in Safe because he appeared to be the, um, the person most likely to succeed if that regime remained in place. But, <clears throat> I mean, once the Arab Spring began, it was clear that in the case of none of these regimes, they were going to stay as they were because you, you have in all of these countries, you've got young populations who are um, anxious for change, feel economically and politically deprived, and what you've really had in the Arab Spring is two groups of people coming together to remove the existing order. On the one hand, you've got Islamists, and on the other hand, you've got what I would call the more liberal-minded. And really part of the problem in the whole of the Arab Spring is that those two groups come together in a common objective, which is to remove the regime. But after that, of course, there's a profound disagreement as to what comes, comes next. Someone to put in place a a society that is effectively governed by Islamism, and the others want a, a society probably more like the one that we have. And those two fundamentally divergent visions are in conflict with each other. But so I think post the Arab Spring, there was never any way this that the regime was going to go to the um, the the children of, of of the dictator, as it were. But Prior to that, obviously we were, as part of the engagement, we, we, I think the system did engage with Saif. I think I met him once or maybe twice myself. Um, and who knows what would have happened if, if the Arab Spring hadn't erupted. There may have been a, a more peaceful evolution of the country. We just don't know. Um, but you know, it's important to point out that despite all the engagement that we had with Gaddafi, and as I say, I'm very happy to justify that and to explain exactly why we did it and what benefits it brought. I mean, I was never under any illusions that, that in the end that society had to change fundamentally in order to allow its people to, to govern themselves in a way compatible with the 21st century. I mean, I think because of the way events moved and the pace they moved at, I think there is no option in the end but to intervene. But, I mean, I did try, as, as this thing got underway, um, to see if there was a possibility of him going and going, as it were, voluntarily and having a different, a different type of transition put in place. So there was no question in the end that the government of the country had fundamentally to change, but it's very similar to the position with Assad in Syria. If you, in my view, and I say this particularly having gone through Afghanistan and Iraq, where the problem is you can remove the dictatorship, Taliban or Saddam, but after you remove the dictatorship, then you get all those forces repressed and suppressed by the dictator, then come to the surface, and then you get external actors who then try to destabilize the situation. Because of that experience, I thought right from the outset with the Arab Spring, if you can get a peaceful evolution, that's better than a revolution, because the revolution produces the chaos. I'm not sure it was ever possible to do that in the case of um, Gaddafi and Libya, but I, I did make a, an attempt at the time, as, as you know. I think we'll get into that. We'll get, we'll get into some of the, 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 the detail.